Today on Wood Turning, we're going to be working with resin casting and a Banksia pod and make this really cool ornament. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. Now, I'm a novice at resin casting. A lot of people have been doing it for quite a bit longer than me, but we're going to have some fun today and we're going to be using all this stuff over here. And it's kind of like it takes a village to make this project. But we're not going to worry about that right now because we're going to take this Banksia pod and get it ready for casting. Okay, now I have the Banksia pod mounted between centers on the lathe, but for those of you not familiar with the Banksia pod, isn't this a cool looking weird thing? I mean, it is hard inside, it's got this red velvet fuzz that we got to get rid of, and then you got this gnarly exterior. This is a seed pod that grows off the Banksia pod, pod, Banksia tree in Australia. So it's really, really cool. And man, they are dry and brittle, and you better wear a helmet when you turn it because it's in one of my three areas of three things of extreme turning. Oh, that's a little slow. Let's go faster. Stuff's going to fly out now. Seeds come flying out. Junk come flying out. Spiders come flying out. Now we're going to use the Easy Wood Carbide Cutter here because this thing will handle that and not dull. This is really tough material. You just want to feed it in like so. And you can see already why I have this face mask on. So look how quickly this carbide moves through this. So, we just zip through here. We have a couple layers we have to worry about. That was the outer layer, the bumpy layer. And now you can see the red fuzz here. We want to get rid of most of that. And actually we did pretty good. So I'm going to take off about an eighth of an inch there. And then we'll be ready to do some fun stuff. Okay, now this is a converted paint pressure pot. People who paint houses and things put paint in here, you put pressure in here with the air compressor, and then you can spray paint all day long, well, until your pressure runs out. So this has been modified for resin casting. I am not gonna tell you how to do it because this is a potential bomb. There are some really good examples on YouTube. I'll try to put a couple links in there for you to look at in the, I'll put them in the description on how to build this. But you've gotta add a couple nozzles, a couple re release valves and such. You gotta get rid of the paint mixer. And then inside here, this is where you wind up putting your resin castings. And what the pressure does for you is when you mix up your resin, it's gonna have bubbles. This pressure makes the bubbles really, really tiny tiny so you don't see them so the stuff you cast looks perfectly clear and clean. Okay I'm making my first batch of resin here and this is Alumalite Ultra Clear I think is what they call it. And it's uh, yeah clear slow. It's really nice clear when it casts out. This one's done by weight. These things are all different depending on who you get so I'm not like I said I'm not an expert so you got to read your instructions to figure it out but you want to mix it very very well. It's like an epoxy or it is an epoxy. And so I have 12 minutes to work with this and I've mixed six ounces, weighed out six ounces of A and then six ounces of B on top of that. Just make sure you put your cup on there, but when you turn that on because then it will zero out. That's my little postage scale. So Alumalite has colors. So this stuff is intense. I'm going to put in one, <laughs> two, three, four, five drops of this for 12 ounces of resin. And then watch how quickly this becomes blue. See, isn't that cool? So you also want to mix that in really well, unless you want the effect of it to be swirly. That's okay too. Now we have a. My wife doesn't know. I took one of her spray bottles and I absconded with it. I do not have a bunch of st cool stuff set up to be able to cast. Uh, so I'm scrounging anything I can for a form. This can sit, lean to the side. Doesn't matter. We'll take care of that later when we are turning it. We're going to take this now and we're going to pour this in. Let's see if I can get to where Brian can see it. There we go. So there it goes. Hopefully we have enough. 
nope I'm gonna need a little bit more so I'm gonna have to mix up a real quick batch and we're gonna top that off okay so I had to put a little block of wood on top here because the Banksia pot obviously wants to float <laughs> so we'll take this put this inside here like so so now you can see it sitting in the center there pick this up so here's my lid this thing is heavy I mean this is really well-made stuff make sure when you buy your pressure pot you only put as much pressure in as it's rated for this one is rated for 80 so I will go for 80 you can actually buy from a couple companies pre uh, hacked pressure pots that are made for resin casting this one came with some wheels by the way and I had the wheels on it because I thought that was really cool turned out to be a real pain because when you start tightening this stuff down it wanted to roll so I, I put little bolts down there instead so it sits hard on the floor and it won't slide much big difference and you want to get this tight because the seal you have has to hold a lot of pressure and where does that pressure come from well, it comes from my compressor <laughs> so let's see I want to close this one I do believe this one's closed so we put this on here okay now I'm gonna open this valve and you'll see the gauge start going up it takes a little bit to get it up there but once it gets up to about 80 I'm going to turn it off, disconnect this hose, and then we're going to let this sit overnight. Now this might set up or could set up in three to four hours, uh, but I just want to go ahead and leave it overnight just to be safe. So all that pressure now is pushing out all those bubbles I created by stirring. It's also pushing all the resin into the holes of the Banksia pod, and that's what's going to make it permeate it, go into it to where we're going to have a really cool looking blank. Okay, so. I have a blank already made. I took it out of some PVC I put it in. It was great. It slid right out. It didn't have to worry about getting rid of the PVC. But you can see we have some issues. So here's some bubbles in here. And so there's another process called vacuum chamber. With, if there's any moisture in something like this, it'll make bubbles. And I really didn't think there's any moisture in these because these are old farts. They've been in my shop a long time. But we got some bubbles. But we're going to turn that away. The other issue is, is I didn't build a chamber perfectly fitted to the Banksia pod. So my Banksia pod did this. Well, this is the end of the Banksia pod and this is the end of the Banksia pod. So we're a little out around. My goal is, is right now I want to sneak up and get to the Banksia pod without turning away much of it. I want to stay as centered as possible on the Banksia pod because we can't waste any of it to make this ornament. So let's start her up slow and see if everything stays on the lathe. Okay. I'm going to go back to my carbide and we're just going to whack away at this a bit. Stay, stay, stay. So we've rounded this out. I used a couple different tools to get to where I want it to be and I've put a tenon on here, mounted it in the chuck, and you can see we uh, did pretty good. We have some areas where the uh, resin didn't get all the way into the holes, but we'll fix that in a minute. What I want to do is start shaping now, and I put on my robust six inch tool rest, which is really handy because when you run into these tight spaces, you need something like that. I'm also going to be using, which is new to the market the last uh, year or so, is a robust spindle gouge. They're starting to make their own line of tools, and I'm very happy to be able to use them. They're really high quality, and they they hold a really good edge and I've had a lot of fun with them so far and I do like getting back to a wooden handle it's kind of nice easy wood makes a wooden handle too and it just something about that just makes you feel kind of natural having a wood handle in your hand that could have gone real south real fast but I walked my way through it <laughs> so looking at this you know we're kind of making a bell shape it's not gonna be a typical bell though because with a bank sea pod it is just like Forrest Gump said it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get until you get into it. So all the shapes are going to be a little bit different. And so on this, I'm going to make the bell part a little bit of a lip about right here. But then I'm going to have to make it swoop in and then go back out because that's where the fat part of the bang sea pot is. So I'll just roll the tool, sneak up on my bead there. There we go. That looks good. I'm going to come back here, make a bead here. There, now we got both sides of the bead. 
And then I kind of want to come in here and just kind of chisel my way in and indent this a bit. Now this might be a really cool fat bell. See how it goes. Now when you're working with resins, carbide straight up will be a little chippy. But something that Easywood did, and I've spoken about it a little bit before, is they made a game changer, game changer, and it's their negative rake carbide. So this carbide tip rolls off on the edges. So when you come in here and you start using it on resin and stuff, it takes a perfect scraping cut and it doesn't damage the resin. It does a beautiful, look at the feathers of wood coming off there and resin. So it's really nice. This is wonderful for putting that finishing surface on whatever you're making. And right now this shape is going really weird. So whatever I'm making will turn out to be whatever I'm making. Let's look at it real close here. Look how baby smooth that is. I mean, I can start sanding a 400 grit on that. This thing, this thing is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna keep shaping this a little bit more and then we'll talk about how we're gonna fill those holes there. So now we have to do a little bit of housekeeping because as you can see, here's an example. There's a bubble in there and so that's not filled up. Well, that'll look kind of ugly in the end, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take some cyanoacrylate glue. This is gap filling. We're gonna put a little bit of it in there. Just I'll get it on the camera. Now, one thing you want to be careful about is don't fill it all the way up. I did that on one of them, and what happened was the outside dried, but the inside did not. So I'm just going to take a dental pick, kind of smoosh that in there. I'm going to take some accelerator, and that's going to accelerate the drying process on that. So once that dries off, I'm going to fill the level back up, fill back up again, get it level, do that a couple times. Let me run over to one more here. See, there's a little bitty one right there. This one I might be able to do in one shot along with this one right here. So I haven't sanded yet because I'm going to have to go back and turn off all this glue because it's going to be sticking a little bit proud. So you want to be careful and not use too much because you don't want to get too heavy handed when you clean this off. But anyway, round the horn a few more times. Okay, I sanded to 400 grit and that looks pretty cool. So now we're going to prep for hollowing and I'll take my four center bit and drill a hole. Got my little friend the elbow hollowing system rigged up. Seems like overkill for something like this, but when you go in deep into a smaller opening, you need something to help keep you from getting flipped over by all the rotational force. So I have my laser on, and that is the width of the wall that I want, which is about a quarter of an inch. You don't have to go real thin on this because the light shines through that acrylic really well. Acrylic? Resin. Something like that. It's plasticky. Anyway, we're going to turn this up. Speed is your friend. And this is a scraper also, so I'm just going to take light cuts, and I'm just going to round the edge off here and do little pull cuts. There are fibers inside of the Banksia pod, and they run to the outside of the pod. So it's like the grain in wood, So it, but it doesn't have an end grain or a side grain. It's all running towards the out, so it's all end grain. I guess that's the best way to put it. So I'm just going to gently work my way in. And when this dot drops off the side of the vessel, the vessel, the ornament, then I know I've got my wall thickness. And you want to go in small increments. You don't want to go deep real fast and take a lot out at one time. You just want to work your way in gently and just repeat that action over and over to get to where you want to be. Okay, so it's hollowed, about a quarter inch thick. You can see the lights coming through. I think that's pretty cool. Let me turn that off. <laughs> we now have all of our protective gear. We have the door open to the shop because the fumes are going to get really bad here in just a second because we're going to use super glue as our finish. And I'm using the hot stuff. And I'm using the, the hot stuff is really thin. So this is the fast glue. So when this goes on, one, you want to be to the side so it doesn't splatter on you. And two, it goes really fast. So you have to be very careful about applying this or you'll get stuck to it. <laughs> and I'm going to use the accelerator when necessary. But the fumes off of this are just incredibly interesting. And you got to go quick. And the first coat might not be perfect because this dries so quickly. I want to get a little bit into this edge up here. Look at the smoke is coming off of... No, it was a second ago. There you go. Can you see the smoke coming off of this? That's it curing. So I'm going to put several coats on here 
try not to breathe a lot. <laughs> Do a little accelerate here. And so I'll give that a couple seconds to dry. Throw that away. Do another one. One thing I've got to try to do right here, you can see the transition. It's not wet now, so Brian can get in. There's the lip, there's that. You can see it's a little dry right there, so I got to make sure I get this like that really quick and get some in there to build that up. So I'll do that once Brian steps back, and you'll just have to take my word for it that it worked. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> okay, keep going. Real quick application, you don't want to go back. You just do it and get out of the way. There we go. It looks pretty doggone good right now, but we can even make this pop some more. So I have Yorkshire, 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 Yorkshire grit down here. The brown is the more abrasive paste. Do not get it reversed because I did that the other day and I'm going, why isn't this stuff working? <laughs> so I've got that on here. We're talking Splatter City again. So there we go. Just put on a nice thin coat like so. Oh God, it went down my neck. <laughs> So anyway, don't go too deep in here, by the way, because if you get your finger caught in there, you're in a world of hurt. So a little bit of pressure, build up a little bit of heat. That's looking good. Now we'll come back and take off the excess. <laughs> you can already see from the reflections on this thing what it's doing to it, right? This is incredible. And this is just the more abrasive one. We're not even to the fine one yet. So we'll stop that for a second. I'm getting my next piece of paper towel ready, and you can look at that and go ooh and ah. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Comes from across the pond. It is really, really neat. Here we go with the white, which is the fine abrasive grit. Has a nice flavor. Gah, keep your mouth shut, Tim. Okay, try this one now. Go in here. As deep as want to go. A little bit of pressure. Bring it up there, get that little corner there. Come into here. You can do this more than once. I'm just gonna do it once. See what it looks like here. <laughs> that is so cool. So we wanna work on this end now, so I've built a jam chuck onto here, and this fits on and that's a good jam chuck. You hear that sound? So then we're gonna take our tape just for security and wrap it around like so, and that will help us turn that in and hold it nice and solid. We got a final cut here. Really delicate when you have it mounted like this. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I like that little bit of ball. Gonna sand it and finish it just like we did the rest of it. And now to drill a little hole for the hook. Oh, that's a lot of work. Okay, now for the fun part, here we go. Oh, now that turned out well. I had a lot of fun with this and I hopefully I'll get a little more time in on resin casting. So that's how you make a Banksia pod cast ornament. Until the next time on wood turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools.